I think one of the most interesting songs I've heard in revival was one called Holy Spirit Come and Mess Up My Life. Because here's the reality. Normal is not your portion. Normal status quo is not your inheritance. We were meant to experience a God who breaks in with power, with fire, and I believe you are going to experience a touch of that revival fire today. Join us. Welcome to The Resting Place, a place where you will experience the supernatural presence and power of God both in and upon you where you will meet face to face with the Holy Spirit in a tangible way, and where you will encounter signs, wonders, and miracles. Join Larry Sparks, prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image today, as together we enter into The Resting Place. Welcome to The Resting Place. I'm your host, Larry Sparks, and the whole purpose of this show is to teach you how to create a resting place in your life for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. I have someone very special on the program today, somebody I consider to be a spiritual father, a mentor, pastor, doctor, Norman Benz, who's the pastor of Covenant Center International in Palm Beach. How long have you been there now, Pastor Norman? Uh, We've been in the Palm Beaches for almost 40 years and with Covenant for 29 years. Well, I love what happened in 1997. It is somewhat well known in the region down there. What happened on Father's Day, 1997? Let me back up a week before that. It was June 7th. Yes. It was a Saturday night and it was time to go to bed and I took my dog outside to to walk him. My birthday was on June 8th, the next day. And I said to God, I said, God, would you make my next two and a half years surpass the sum cumulative total of my first 50 years. And little did I realize he took my request so seriously (laughs) that on June 15th, 1997, on Father's Day, we had a tremendous outpouring of the Holy Spirit on a Sunday morning that disrupted, disturbed, and was so phenomenal. In fact, Judy called it, it was also awful and awesome. Wow. And John Kilpatrick had prophesied just a few days earlier that on, on June 15th, on Father's Day, there would be a great outpouring in many churches, one of them being in South Florida. Yeah, and I believe it's God's heart for every church to be ignited with Holy Spirit fire. And you and I have done for over five years gatherings in that region and our continuous message to the different people and different denominations to come, listen, we're not trying to make you look like any other churches. I mean, if you have pews, keep the pews. If you've got chairs, go with your chairs. It's ultimately about creating a place where God can do what He wants to do and He can move freely. But leading up to this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, what were what were some of the things that you did personally, you as a staff did? Were, were you hungry? Were you pressing into something? Were you in prayer? How did it look leading up to it? Well, while we know there's no formula, God had me on a path that was that, that was going to be very, very good. In the early 90s, I went to Argentina. Yeah, yeah. And that's when they were experiencing the Argentine fire. And I got a touch from God. I was speaking on a Sunday night in a church. There were about 2,000 people there. And the pastor said afterwards, and this is a Spanish speaking church, and he says, now, will you go down and pray for people? So I had a small team with me. We went down and I think all 2,000 people came to the front. Wow. And we started laying hands on them. And, and, And people started falling to the ground. And... You know, I, I'm, I'm a, a classical Pentecostal by yes, raising. Yes. So I, I was used to some manifestations, but the power and the glory of God was so immense, was so powerful. I said, oh God, I can't touch anyone. I think I'm going to die. Mm. And, and I wouldn't touch people and still the power of God and they were slain in the spirit. And I don't know what all happened, Anna, but I know what happened to me. Yeah. It was a night I will never forget. Isn't that interesting? I think John and Carol Arnett talk about as well, one of the keys to preparing your own heart for a revival, maybe your own church for a revival, is going places where God is moving. 
what you have historically done. I mean, how many times you went to Toronto? I mean, yeah, but I didn't start out that way. No, you no, you didn't. I started out because people in Brownsville were calling Pastor Robert, who was a worship leader in Brownsville previously, who who was co-founder of Covenant too, and they said, "You got to get up there and see what God's doing." I said. Mm. If God wants to do something, he can do it right here at Covenant. I don't need to go up to Brownsville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wrong. Wow. And, and I became a person, and Judy and I, we went to wherever someone said the Holy Spirit was moving powerfully. We did our best to get there so we'd get an impartation of that, and we could bring it back to South Florida and to Covenant. Yeah, and I think that's so important is to exposing yourself to what God is doing because it gives you a vision for what God can do through you, what mm -hmm. God could do in your church. <laughs> so, I mean, you guys went places where God was moving. I know that there was significant prayer effort. I mean, oh. even some of the just prayer meetings in your office leading up to the revival. Well, Covenant was founded on prayer, and we did all night prayer meetings, and we would do a uh, chain all the way through the week of prayer and fasting. And we were doing a lot of these things. And I didn't know what that would lead to. All I knew was it was right to do it. Yeah. And, and just a few weeks before the, the outpouring in 97, uh, Pastor Robert and my son, who was on staff too, and myself, we would find ourselves in deep prayer during staff hours, but we didn't tell anybody. We didn't tell each other. Yeah. And, and we had a hunger and a desperation for more of God because I knew there was more than what we were experiencing. We were a good church, but we weren't good enough. Wow, wow. Isn't that interesting though? Praying, it's not even, no, it's not even 100% you knew what you were praying for, but God was birthing something you in those prayer mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage those of you who are watching, I believe one of the most important things that needs to be restored right now, I mean, Pastor Norman was talking about how their church was founded on prayer. I actually feel like the Lord is restoring the primacy of the prayer meeting the priority of the prayer meeting. And the Lord says even right now, listen, if you call a prayer meeting, whether it's a church or even just you as a family, if you call a prayer meeting, do not let numbers dictate the future of the prayer meeting. In other words, Jeremiah Lamphere in the 1800s. I mean, we're very familiar with that wonderful prayer revival that took place. But I love it because he just started doing these prayer revivals, his prayer meetings. The first one, maybe six people showed up. And, and all of them were late. And all of them were, exactly, they all trickled in. And sadly today, just in our world where we measure so much by numbers and externals, we would have shut something like that down mm -hmm. before God really had an opportunity to move. So I find that amazing. It was prayer, going places where God was moving, any other quick things that you could share that led up to that. Well, one of the things that God put in my heart too was that, that uh, that he called me into repentance yeah. and, and racial repentance mm -hmm. and, and reconciliation. And, and I would go down to the, uh, where, where the black churches were located in, in, on the Tamarind Corridor there in West Palm Beach. Yeah. And I'd stop by every church and I would pray them. Uh, and then it came that I, I got to preach in several of those churches and I preached repentance and I preached reconciliation, yeah. and some of them came to covenant, and we exchanged pulpits. I didn't know how big repentance was then. All I knew is you were supposed to do it. I didn't know it was a precursor, precursor to a great move of God. Wow, wow. Well, and those are the things I want to encourage you. I mean, we're going to go and unpack a whole lot more in the next segment, but really, number one, going places where God is yes. moving. Yes. That will provoke your hunger prayer, making prayer a priority, because I believe God will grip you in the place of prayer to birth revival, and then a lifestyle of repentance, reconciliation. Bill Johnson says it this way, is repentance, a life of repentance is living face to face with God. It's beautiful. Join us. We're going to be right back talking more about revival. Larry Sparks is a prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image. He travels worldwide, equipping everyday believers to encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit in their everyday lives, translating God's supernatural power to the spheres of influence they have been called to. Larry is driven by a vision to see the earth filled with God's glory. This will happen only as every person, touched by the power of God, 
learns how to become a resting place for the Holy Spirit and releases His power, prophetic strategy, and presence into education, government, media, arts and entertainment, business, family, and the church. As Larry hosts meetings and seminars, the presence of God moves with great power to renew believers, revive the lost, and send forth reformers to change the world. Check out his website for more information. Sparks here. Welcome back to The Resting Place. I'm here with Pastor Norman Benz, and there is a song that has come out of your church <laughs> written by your worship leader, the wonderful Robert Varnador. <laughs> I love it. It's called Holy Spirit, Come and Mess Up My Life. I, I, I think that's fantastic because, listen, it's not a bad mess up. It's, it's Holy Spirit is rearranging things to actually bring them into their proper order. And I'm convinced for so long, we've been doing a version of what we call decently in an order. And unfortunately, we've maybe ordered the Holy Spirit right out of things. And He wants to come back in His fullness, in His presence, in His power. And that brings me to, J uh, to June of 1997 Father's Day, where God broke out at Covenant Church. What, what did it look like? Paint a picture. It was June 15th, and I want to tell you, we were decent and in order. Yeah, yes. We were worshiping. My son was on the uh, platform with the worship team, and, and he, but remember, we had been praying individually yeah. Yeah. for a great touch of God, and all of a sudden, on that Sunday morning, in front of God and everyone, <laughs> our son drops to the floor, vibrating under the power of the Spirit. Mm. And that's where Judy coined a phrase, it was awful and awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, if it had been anybody else, she would have said to the ushers, get that person out of here. Yes. It was so awesome that day. And it was, God put a different definition on decent and order mm. for us. Mm. And we've been learning about it ever since. Because what I would consider a, liturgic, a liturgical decent and in order was not the same thing yeah. Holy Spirit said was decent and in order. Yes. And we gave ourselves to Him. We came back on Monday night and prayed. We came back on Tuesday night and prayed. These were spontaneous prayer meetings nobody called. People would be driving by on the interstate, and one of our members said, what's going on? Turned around and came back to the prayer meeting. Wow, wow. And it also, like you said about Bill Johnson, one of the things that, that happened was we learned that repentance yes. must be a lifestyle. Yes, yes. And so it keeps us humble before God, too, yes. so that He can do the great and mighty things. Was there a moment, because now I'm just interested, right before your son got really touched by the Holy Spirit, what was, was it in the midst of worship? Oh, was yes, it? we were worshiping. Like I said, we were decent and in order. <laughs> uh, and God brought a new order. Wow, wow. And I'm so thankful. We have not been the same ever since. You've not recovered. You got messed no. up. Got messed up, and I hope to get more messed up. Yes. But isn't that interesting? Because I have to believe when we study these different revivals, and you've got to tell a little bit about your background because you have a doctorate of ministry from the Reformed Theological Seminary. Your dissertation was on revival when God... When the Holy Spirit comes down. When the Holy Spirit comes down. So you have studied revival. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting? I find that in so many of these revivals, particularly the last hundred years, we see these moments. We call them defining or marked moments, just like with your son, where God breaks in and he's looking, he's probably looking for what will, what will the people do with this moment? Well, in the first great awakening, Jonathan Edwards what was you know, a key figure in that. His preaching was not, it was powerful, but it was monotonous. Yes. But his wife was the one who was experiencing the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And Jonathan Edwards says, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. But because it's my wife, yeah. I see it's valid. Wow. And that's kind of what happened to us in the church because it was our son. That move of the Holy Spirit became more validated. Wow. Now, we lost people, but we gained a whole lot more people. Yeah. People were hungry for God, and they're still hungry for God. Yes, yes. 
Well, it's interesting because even when the Holy Spirit does something, and we talk about manifestations of people shaking or trembling or falling or laughing, but all of those things to me, I never want to tolerate them. I want to celebrate them yes. a, as yes. you have done. I mean, I mean, I feel like early in revival, the Lord really gave you a strong word from Thessalonians. Uh, oh, he did. I mean, you got to share that because oh. that's essential. It was, uh, we'd had a wonderful Sunday morning celebration. Holy Spirit was there. We prayed for people and people were being touched by God. And on the way out, it probably was about two o'clock in the afternoon because we only did one service, but it lasted about four or five hours yeah. by the time people were recovered enough to go home. Yeah. <laughs> and I was walking out to, to get in the car and I said, Father, are you satisfied with, are you happy and pleased with today? And he says, yes, but not with you. I was still walking, but it stopped me. And I said, well, what does that mean? He says, I didn't call you to be the superstar. I didn't call you to be the star quarterback. I called you to lead this. And he gave me a scripture, and it was the first Thessalonians 5 and 19. It says, this is what I've called you to do. This. In the King James Version, it says, quench not the spirit. But another version says, don't let the spirit's fire go out. Mm. And I took that to heart. And for the last 23 years, I've been practicing that as much as I know. I watch. I look to see what is happening while we're celebrating so the people are safe to experience God. And yes, there will be manifestations and whatever, but I want to say something and, and to perhaps the people who are watching. I was raised as a Pentecost, Pentecostal, and we said, we don't like wildfire, but I came to understand I don't mind wildfire, but mm. I will not exp I will not tolerate strange fire. Yeah, because yeah. there's a whole lot of difference. And I found out too, Larry, that one of the things Holy Spirit said to me: If you're going to err, err on the side of freedom and not on the side of control. Mm. So, I set a watch around what God is doing, and by His Spirit and by others who are trained to do that too, we guard so that the Spirit's fire will not go out. Well, and I love what's happened because it wasn't just meetings that you did. I mean, you even had some difficult years oh. after the church got literally blown away, n not by the wind of God, but by a hurricane in South Florida. 2004. Yes, but I, I love the fact that one thing never changed is that revival left a mark and it and your culture was adjusted Our because of it. Our culture was changed. What did that look like specifically? Previously, and in many churches, we'll say, does anyone want prayer? Yeah. Come down to the front for prayer. Elders will be there. Nobody would come. Yeah. <laughs> but after Holy Spirit came, like He did, it changed our whole prayer life. It changed our whole ministry time, where every service we give the opportunity for people to be ministered to, for there to be a laying on of hands and impartation. Yeah. And that's the part of our culture that changed. People became so much more receptive and they would come knowing they could experience God and it would be a safe place to do that. Yes, yes. Well, we have one more segment. When we come back, we want to just minister as we're led by the Holy Spirit. Again, our prayer is that the Holy Spirit would come in His awesome, awful way. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It is awful, but it's awful for everything yes. that's trying to restrict you, yes. restrain you to keep your church mm -hmm. maybe from stepping into its full destiny. Yeah, it's awful because it burns up and consumes up everything that is preventing and hindering you from entering God's fullness. So we're going to pray into that. Join us. We'll be right back. Since 1983, Destiny Image has had a clear mandate, publish the prophets. Over the years, the team at Destiny has identified and published some of the most cutting edge and pioneering supernatural books of the generation, launching key leaders into visibility and helping bring the people of God into agreement with heaven's prophetic timeline. Every month, Destiny Image releases powerful new books that help believers understand and walk in the fullness of their prophetic destiny to be supernaturally conformed into the image of Jesus. 
Visit norimediagroup.com to learn about releases from Destiny Image and Harrison House Publishers. And visit destinyimage.tv for thousands of hours of on-demand video training and equipping on how to live a supernatural life. Welcome back. Larry Sparks here for The Resting Place. I am with my special guest, Pastor Norman Benz, and we want to bring people up to speed with what is God doing right now. You and I have had the privilege of doing many events and gatherings mm -hmm. together with some of the key revivalists, John and Carol Arnett, Duncan Smith, Karen Wheaton, people who we've been intentional to bring people to South Florida who have walked in revival. Yes. They're not theorists, they're practitioners. And one service, I'll never forget, it was Heidi Baker, Randy Clark. It was one of those gatherings. And it was just powerful. God was all over the building. And I had a moment where I had to go up and do something technical in the sound room. So I went up there and I, this thought occurred to me when I went up there, I wasn't going for anything spiritual, but when I went up there, God was up there too. And I was reminded, wow, God has filled this building. I've never experienced a measure of the presence of God like this. I remember coming down, we looked at each other. I don't know who said it to who, but somebody said, what do we do now? And the other person said, I don't know. And the Lord spoke to me right there. And he said, that's the sign that you're entering a new era when you don't know what to do and you consult me. Because our options would be this. We could look back to what's worked maybe 10, 15 years ago. We could reach into like a church growth handbook and say, well, what do they do there? I mean, not that they even have stuff for, for a phenomenon like that. I felt like the Lord said a new era. One of the signs is that you do enter new territory, places you're unfamiliar with, you're uncomfortable with, and you say, yes, Lord. And we're seeing that. It's uncharted. We don't know exactly what he's going to do next. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I don't know. I can take the word exactly out, but all I know is he wants people who are yielded to yes. him yeah. to do whatever he says. Yeah. And the problem with that is we get worn down yeah. Yeah. With, with events and with life and with uh, e even what, what we're going through in this last year. And, and it wears on us and it produces a weariness. And I come back even to, to this program today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Refreshed understanding again. It is a new era. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I'm dependent upon him. Yeah. And what he wants and how he wants to do it. There are many people who can tell you what they think ought to be done. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's like you and I have talked about before. God has called us, and I am accountable to God for that calling before I'm accountable to anyone or anything else. It's a sacred calling. I revere the calling of God upon my life, just like I've seen him touch you. And we've done this together. Yeah. And in the last six years, we've seen a rise of the tide in the Palm Beaches in Southeast Florida, because he said, and he said this many years before, but he says it will be like a, a revival fire that will go up I-95 yeah. all the way up the eastern seaboard, all the way into New, New England, and it would open up the United States to a, to a great Holy Spirit move of God. I think that's part of that new era yeah. because what he has revealed to us and what he has said to us and what we have heard through the prophets and what we have heard through the churches is happening. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing, though, that I, I, I want to say, too, that's in my heart and my spirit is to say the five fill, for the fivefold gifts that were given to the church by Jesus, yeah. I think they have underserved the church. Mm. I pray that we get a revelation of what that means and how to go beyond that. And then the church has underserved the kingdom of God because in this new era, there's going to be an expansion of the kingdom of God like we've never seen before. And we are going to be kingdom people who are experiencing him and operating in Holy Spirit power. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because when you talk about the fivefold ministry, the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, they are actually called the gifts of Christ or mm -hmm. they are gifts. They are actually given 
by Jesus to the church, to serve yeah. the church. Yes. And we pray that the Lord would continue to get, I mean, none of them are meant to be celebrities. None of them are meant to be superstars. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for how God raises people up. He'll continue to do that. But they are meant to serve what God is doing mm -hmm. in the earth. Mm -hmm. And we just want to even pray right now. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to have Pastor Norman pray. But we pray that the Holy Spirit would come even now as you're watching. And as you were talking about, so many people need to be refreshed. There are so many things competing for our attention, so many things competing for our focus. But I ask you even now just to pause as you're watching and you're listening. Pause. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to come over you like a refreshing waterfall. Mm -hmm. And He wants to wash off the day. He wants to wash off anxiety. He wants to wash up depression. I believe He wants to wash those things off and just give you a moment of peace in His presence. Yeah, there's a lot He's calling us to do. He's mobilizing an army. He's raising up people who I believe are going to change the world. But my prayer even now, we're talking about revival, the move of God, you'd be continually mm. refreshed by His presence as you are called to go forth and bring His refreshing to other people and wherever you're called and assigned to go. Pastor, would you mind just even looking at the camera and ministering as you're led by the Holy Spirit? According to Isaiah 64 and 1. Yep, yep. Rend the heavens and come down. Yep. Rend the heavens. I know you've come, Holy Spirit. Yeah. I know you are here now, but I know you're going to keep on coming. Yeah. I say rend the heavens and come down and do something in our lifetimes that we've never seen before. Yes. Take up our tent pegs and, and stretch the cords, Lord, that, that, that our territory will expand that you've given to each of us personally. So, Holy Spirit, again, I say, we're in the heavens yes. and come down. Yeah. Consume all of those mountains and all of those obstacles and yes. all of those things that we deal with that would hinder us from becoming all that we can for Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I bless you. Uh, and, uh, and those of you who are watching, I bless you with the greatest blessing of the Holy Spirit, of fire and glory and love that you've ever seen before. Yeah. He's worth everything. Give your heart to Him totally and completely. Yeah. Never be afraid to repent. But I say today again, as, as I just close this one more time, Larry, Holy Spirit, yeah. rend the heavens, come down yes. and touch your people. And not just a visitation, yes. but a habitation. Yes, God. Father, we thank you even now for how you move on your people. Lord, rest on them with power. Mm. Holy Spirit, for fresh fillings, for yes. fresh baptisms. Yes, yes. I speak to the one even now who said, you know what? I had that happen. I got, I got touched you know, 20 years ago. I spoke in tongues. There's always more. Yes. There's always more. Holy Spirit, I'm thinking of Isaiah 6 right now, where it talks about Isaiah, the prophet, saying, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. When you look that up in the Hebrew, it would actually strongly insinuate that God filled the place. God filled the temple. And I'm praying this over you right now because I literally feel electricity. Mm -hmm. I feel the fire of God is going to touch you. He filled the temple. But it was almost, and his train filled the temple as well. There was so much of God. He came into the place, but he kept coming in. He's the God who comes and he keeps coming because there's always more. So, Holy Spirit, we do ask you to come even now. Mess up our lives. Rearrange our lives to look like your plan, your purpose. God, may we walk in your version of decently and in order. God, we repent for being out of order. And right now we say, God, we step in to the order of the move of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching.